Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at something completely by accident, at least on my end, and that is Smithsonian Open Access. And this is a hidden gold mine for game developers, and before you get into it, yes, you can use everything here in a commercial project if you so wish. So what we're going to do is jump in, take a look at what this is all about, and go from there. Now i got to admit, this isn't news, at least this isn't news uh, in terms of just being made available. The Smithsonian uh, Open Access was actually launched in... Uh, early 2020. I just had no idea about it. And I figured if I had no idea about it, there's a good chance that most of you had no idea about it either. And this is a huge resource. So you probably know what the Smithsonian is. It's a, uh, well, to you, it's probably a museum, but it's actually sort of a research network. It's globally available. There are a number of different museums, locations, all under the control of Smithsonian, but they've also got a huge catalog of uh, assets under their control and what they did is they made those all available to everybody so I'm going to take a look at like two of them immediately all both related this is Carnegie Mellon um, Mansion so or Car Carnegie Mansion I've opened it up in Blender this was imported as a GL um, GLTF file that I pulled down this is the exterior of the building oh wait no this one came in as an FBX the other one came in as a GLTF so here you can see this is one of the assets that you can pull out of Smithsonian online like I said, just loaded it up in Blender exactly as it was. So you can see a fully texture map, a recreation of um, the Carnegie Mansion. So that, that if you're looking for something like this for use in your game, you can use this guy. At the same time, I have another uh, version of it I downloaded. Here we are now inside. This is a low polygon GLTF version of the interior of the first floor of the mansion. And I can see definitely uses for both of these. By the way, there is a much higher polygon version of this available. So if you want uh, that, it is out there. I just figured I'd show you the low res version. So you've got this full house as an example that you can actually wander around in. It's getting fully recreated, fully texture mapped, and so on, both internally and externally and there is an internal one that has a heck of a lot more detail like i said this one came in as an fbx file the other one was a gltf file they're generally available in a number of different 3d object formats but truth of the matter is it's probably not mostly 3d stuff you're going to be interested in it's the 2d side of things because if you go to the open access i guess we'll call it search engine or portal uh, there's something like 3 million 2D digital items out there. And then, of course, there is uh, a number of 3D, but not nearly as much. And a lot of the 3D stuff, to be honest, is things like LiDAR scans of uh, objects, 3D scans of real world things. There's definitely some useful items in there, but where you're going to probably find the most use is 2D, especially if you need content for your game or if you want uh, texture maps, recreation, so on. It's this huge source of assets, and you can use these however you want for the most part. So we're going to start with that one first so how can you use open access stuff well first off um huge access of cc0 uh content here this means smithsonian dedicate um, de um dedicates the digital assets into the public domain meaning it is free of copyright restrictions you can use it for any purpose free of charge without further permission from the smithsonian as new images are digitized they are determined to be copyright free the smithsonian will dedicate them as cc0 ongoing in terms of CC0, uh, is designation used by cultural organizations to waive copyrights uh, that it may have for digital assets. So Smithsonian uses CC0 to tell people that they do not need the Smithsonian's permission to use digital assets in any way. Now, in any way, of course, makes people wonder, okay, well, what about commercial? Like so, could I use it in a commercial game? Yes. Yes, you may. Again, no requirement for attribution, permission, no fees paid to the Smithsonian, nothing. Just go ahead and use. But if it is not designated as CC0, you still have to get per written permission from the Smithsonian. But everything that is marked as CC0, use it as you wish. There are a few things that are not included. Some, some of the stuff might be under copyright. So for example, if it was a scan of Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse is still copyright. They can't release that as CC0. But basically anything you find on here that is CC0 released, you can use it commercially in your game. The one exception, by the way, to be aware of, and this is kind of a fringe use, you cannot use their logo. So that's the only kind of limitation here. But for the most part, there is over 3 million items here already. Some of it is definitely in the... Um, 
the 3D side of things, and we'll we'll take a look here now. So here is like the homepage. You got 3.1 million images in here, and then 2,341 models. You also dig down into it a little bit more. They've got some things like uh, like lidar scans of the Dutch coast, that kind of stuff. Very specialized or niche in what it's working with. But let's say you're working on uh, an old Victorian house you wanted to model. So then we needed to come up with some classic wallpaper scans. So let's just search for wallpaper and. Here you go, all kinds of wallpapers. So if you needed to bring this in, turn that into a um, seamless texture, you can start from here, get some classic wallpaper out of here, high resolution images, there's almost always a download link available here, and you can see the attribution over here. Once again, if it is CC0, do with it as you wish. There's things are gonna be at various different uh, scan levels and so on, let's say you were looking more at, I don't know, let's say, um, Oh, now I'm not coming up with, uh, let's go with marble. Let's see what we can find under marble. So you need a marble texture or marble scan or marble something or other. We have both, you know, scanned images of marbles that you could then use to extract out and get a texture out of that. Did we have any 3Ds here? Yeah, we got so five 3D models there. So if you need to get marble as your source there for a texture, you could use this to basically raw source what you need. Same thing as if you need classic drawings that are available there. Let's go take a look at what 3D models are available under marble. So you see here, we've got some uh, st statues that were done. By the way, any of the 3D stuff, you can come in here and there is actually a 3D viewer available for that. So if you needed a bus to put in your game, boom, you're done. Here's, here's George Washington. Why is George Washington dressed up as a Roman? Not really sure there, uh, but you come down here, you'll see if you click the download link, there's multiple different options normally available. GLB and GLTF are both GLTF2 format. Uh, we've got OBJ uh, here in this particular case as well. Sometimes it'll be FBX. There is just kind of uh, a ton of content on here. It, it's kind of amazing. And especially once again, if you are looking at more of a throwback um, thing, let's say you need a propaganda poster. Let's try that prop. Oh, now I have to spell propaganda. Propaganda. I think that's how it's spelled. No, it's not. All right. Come on, Squiggly. Let's get the right one. All right, here we go. Propaganda. Let's see what we find. All right, 517 examples of it. So we got 506 websites, and then we've got five images here. So if you wanted to put that on your here, so we wanted to do there. So you needed to have a propaganda poster for your uh, throwback game. Go ahead and grab it here. We got the high resolution image right there. Just boom, copy that out, throw that in as a texture in your game and you are good to go. There is an absolute ton of content here. Once again, various different options available there, including a high res scan. So most of the stuff you're going to get gigantic scans of. In this particular case, you're talking uh, 2K by 4K resolution JPEG. There is a TIFF version available, or we can do like lower resolution screen image, kind of like what you're seeing here. So very, very high resolution stuff. I did find like, for example, that FBX file I opened up earlier. Here is the scan as it came down. So we we're talking 200 megabytes for the interiors. For the, so we looked at this version right here is a very, very, very low res GLTF uh, version of it. But if you want the authentic experience, there is also these two floors of it there in really high format. Now this did take some time to download, so it doesn't seem like for each person their servers are exceedingly fast. Do have a bit of patience, but if you're coming in and using this mostly as an image or a texture source, there is a ton here. So uh, if you're looking, again, especially if you're trying to create a more historical style game, there is there's a lot to like here. Then in terms of the 3D model stuff, let's go look at, I know the X1 model is in here. There's a lot of things like dinosaur bone scans and so on like that, but here we go. There's the Bell X1, that's a picture of it. Let's go to the 3D model section. Bum, bum, bum. So here are some of the models available. Again, anything here you're seeing in 3D, you can bring it down in various different formats. So here is the Bell X1. This is a actual scan, I think, of the, the object. So there you can see it. In 3D, you could bring it down. You got a number of different perspectives of it or, or images to work from. So if you want um, to model something like this and you're just looking for reference materials, if they have something, they probably have a ton of content on it. Something that you're gonna have an absolute nightmare of a time trying to find. So even if you were just recreating yours yourself and you were just looking for reference materials for modeling something, the Smithsonian uh, catalog could also be a great place to start. There's the actual X1's cockpit that you can see there. I think they got a straight on shot of it too from the inside. 
Yeah, so here you go. So if you wanted to recreate the cockpit in your game, there it is. Pull it off, use it as a texture map. Again, fully legal, CC0, do what you wish with it. Or in this particular case, we go back here to the, the 3D model. Uh, you can go ahead and download that in a variety of different formats, including OBJ, GLTF, Draco, GL Compressed Draco. I don't even know what that is. Uh, USDZ, like I said, they're in a variety of different formats, but most of the times the open formats are available, especially um, the OpenGL, sorry, the, the GLTF uh, binary format is almost always available, which is quite cool. And for a static mesh, OBJ is also pretty much always available, which is available for most major platforms. So that there, this is the Smithsonian Open Access Database. Um, again, it is available at, let's go back there, si.edu forward slash open access. And that is for everybody. This is in America only. This is literally for anybody out there. So a bit of a bit of an edge case for the world of game development. But listen, you've got a huge database of textures, images, some 3D models in there and historical resources. On top of that, you even getting a little bit more fringe, you have API access to their actual data. So if you had something like a game that you wanted to have some historical documents in, you may be able to hook them up using uh, these, these files or there's even a GitHub repository of data. I'm not exactly certain what or how this is organized. I haven't got into it a whole lot of detail, but a lot of their actual textual data is available in here or through their API. So if you wanted to link that somehow into your title, especially if you were kind of more in that edutainment kind of space, this could be a great resource for you. So a little bit on the fringe topic side of things. Uh, and again, I, I mostly started covering it because I thought it was brand new and it turned out, like I said, it's almost been a year since it was open accessed. But one of those little things that you just may not realize that this could be a really cool resource for game development, especially with almost everything you're seeing here being CC0 and commercially usable, no license free, no attribution, no nothing. Do check it out. That is the Smithsonian Open Access. And if there's any other like public databases like this that can be used in a commercial setting, let me know. Comments down below, and I'll do my best to share with them with others. All right, that's it. Talk to you later.